Welcome to the April session of Parent University. I'm Dr. Adam Malloy. And I'm Irma Lancaster, and this session is the last one before graduation in May. We have the Future Makers on to talk about their Navigator program. We'll tell you all about summer learning opportunities available at the district. And believe it or not, Adam here is going to show you some basketball tricks, and we'll tell you how to win a family four-pack to the Harlem Globetrotters. All that and more on this session of Parent University. Welcome to Parent University. I'm Dr. Adam Malloy, and our first guest today is Tesla Sage from The Future Makers. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for being here. So Tessa, you are here to tell us about a really exciting opportunity uh, for anybody that maybe is missing a credit. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone who might not have gotten their high school diploma, anyone who might need to learn English, if you started a degree but didn't finish, if you are interested in going back to technical college, learning a new skill, changing careers, you know, we're here to help adult learners return to school in whatever capacity they need to, to whatever school they want to, um, and support them through completing a credential. And this is a part of your larger organization, Future Makers, this is a part of their goal, right? There's a percentage goal that you have that you're trying to reach. Absolutely, yes. We are striving to reach 55% of working age adults in Southwest Florida, having the credentials that we need to fill in demand jobs and really change their lives and change the lives for their kids. Um, so we know that almost the vast majority of, of adults out there right now that are working age do not have a credential, almost 60% do not. And some might not even have a high school diploma or GED or may need to learn English. And so we're, we're using the Navigator program as one tactic to try to reduce that 60% number as quickly as possible. And these Navigators, these are, these are actual, a part, these are people, a part of your team that can help them really get through the process to gain access to the program or to the college. Yeah, we know it's so intimidating to think about going back to school. I mean, especially as parents, I can't even imagine the thought of trying to fit that into your life. And so some people are working one or two jobs, they're juggling kids and getting kids to and from school and everything else. Um, and so the navigators are really there to help remove the barriers that exist for adults. We know the system is mostly designed for this sort of like traditional age student. And so we're trying to remove the barriers that exist for the, for the adults that are out there that need to go back to school. So any interested adult, any parent out there that is looking to participate, they can go to the website, they can fill out a very short form, and you guys will connect with them. Absolutely, yep. That's what we want. We're looking for people. And it's free. So you can't beat that. I mean, if you're thinking about going back to school, it's worth filling out the form just to talk to somebody about what the options are, what the possibilities are. We're also directly connected to employers. So we're working really hard once individuals get that credential to, to get them into a job as well. There are options to finish a GED while also earning another credential. Um, you know, we're really trying to work to make it as quick and easy as possible for folks to, to get the credentials they need to really get into the career that they're, that they're looking for. And you said, again, that the cost is free? Free. Free? Yeah. And you'll help navigate and get connected? Absolutely. Yep. And we've, you know, we've worked really hard to make sure, we understand that barriers are not just related to applications or financial aid. Sometimes barriers are beyond that. And so we really use the network of the Future Makers Coalition. You know, we're 140 organizations strong across Southwest Florida to help remove some of the barriers that might exist that are not directly related to school, but that definitely impact a person's ability to go back to school. That's amazing. Now, you mentioned some of these navigators. They're already out in, in, in the community right now. Yeah. Yeah, you said today that they're out, they're out here, they're out there. They're out there connecting with, with adults, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, they're out at career, to, right today, one's at a career fair, another one is at um, community cooperative at their, at their food pantry. Um, we're just setting up trying to find people who are interested in exploring the opportunity to go back to school. That's amazing. I think that it, it is such a great opportunity uh, for anybody that's missing a, a credit or needs to get connected to finishing their degree. You guys have set up a, a great process and pathway for them. And, you know, that kind of builds us into this career pathways. You've built a kind of a, a network structure for them if they're interested in a certain career. Yeah, yeah. So the way Future Makers works, we pilot projects. And so um, Bank of America is the, is the company that has so generously 
sponsored this, this pilot project of navigators. They believe in it. They think it's really important for our economy and for families. So they're paying for that. But they also happen to sponsor a pilot project around career pathways. And so we know that systems are invisible. Like it's very hard to understand how you enter into a job, what kind of training you need, and then how do you move up in that job or in that career pathway. And so we piloted a project with three um, high growth uh, career pathways in Southwest Florida, healthcare, manufacturing, and marketing and sales. It's on our website. And if you are interested in going into one of those sectors, or if you're in, already in one and you wanna move up, we have a ton of resources on there to help you sort of understand what that system looks like and how to navigate it. So all the schools that you could possibly go to are there, um, uh, tips for resume writing, all those things. So it's there for anyone to use as a resource. It's also there for folks that are working with others who are trying to support others in, in their career pathways, no matter what age they are, as a resource for them too. So Future Makers kind of seems like a, a game changer for our, for our community. Is there anything else you would like to add about Future Makers, Navigators, any of those, any, anything that you guys have going on? Yeah, I mean, we work from cradle to career. We believe that workforce development starts with early childhood education. And so we're, we, you know, we start that young. We know that that is critically important to the talent pipeline. Um, but the other thing that we're doing is with adults, though, is um, we're doing a stop out program. So for a little over a year, we've been looking for folks who stopped out specifically from FGCU and FSW. We've identified thousands of them. Um, and we're looking for those that are still here in Southwest Florida, and we'd like to bring them back. And so there's an opportunity on our website to fill out a form, either whether you went to FSW or FGCU, to see what your credits are, to see what your opportunities to come back are. And we've been working with them to identify ways to make it easier for adults to come back and finish what they started. During the pandemic, we brought back 1,500 uh, stopouts from FGCU and FSW, and we've already awarded 240 degrees. Some people only had like one or two credits before they needed their degree. So if you stopped out, and you want to find out, you know, how much further did I have to go? Or I had some fees to pay, or I have a little bit of debt and that's a barrier. Don't let that stop you from checking in with FGC or FSW. You know, the link is on our website um, to figure out what it might take. And the college navigators can help you go back and finish what you started. Well, Tessa, thank you so much for being on. Future Makers, it sounds like they are really engaged and connected in helping adults you know, complete that degree, that certificate. Uh, so I'm really excited that we got this information on. Thank you so much again for being on. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for being such a great partner. You're welcome. Uh, now, back to, the, uh, back to Parent University. Art is like oxygen. It's something I need to live. And in my world, there are two different types of art. There is tangible art and intangible art. So my tangible art is um, my drawings, paintings, weavings, my sculptures, my tiered wedding cakes, my stained glass windows, and my intangible art is my creativity. And that is something that I work on every single day. My name is Karen Flanders, and I have been an art teacher here in Lee County for 31 years. Um, I am just so blessed to be teaching something that I love. I am a third generation uh, Floridian, and I am an art teacher because of my elementary art teacher. At the Fort Myers Beach Elementary School, um, it was a great school, but it was tough. I academically was not a strong student. In PE, woo! I could barely run the lap, I couldn't do the push-ups, could not do a pull-up to save my life. In the music class, I was in the, uh, the, the listening group, um, that's how great my voice was, but in art, when I walked into Mrs. Nelson's art room at the Fort Myers Beach Elementary School, it was like my safe place. I, I was in heaven. Oh my gosh, it was like finally something I was really good at, something that I loved. Uh, it saved me. Uh, her art class saved me. She, she saw something in me and she grew it and she nurtured it and she is the reason that I'm an art teacher. I went on to Benita Springs Middle School and took art. I went to Cyprus um, with Ms. Martin and took lots of art and I just kept taking art. I kept building, I kept building and here I am 31 years later still having fun with it. 
So, in this art room, we make it fun. Because if I make it fun at this elementary level, my students are going to want to take art in middle school, and they're going to want to take art in high school, and that's where the technical abilities really blossom. So my job is to make it fun. And, and that's what Mrs. Nelson did for me back at the Beach Elementary School. She made it fun. So if I can make it fun and make it a part of my students' lives, they're going to continue to run with it for as long as they can. In, in this art room, I encourage my kids to make mistakes because that is the best learning experience. And, and, and the best place to make mistakes at the elementary level is in the art room because we can go in two different directions, I tell my students. So you make a mistake, oh man, well, you have a choice. You can work with that mistake and you can make it better and fix it and go in a different direction, or you can look at that mistake and you can go, I've learned everything I can from this mistake. I am going to recycle this and I'm going to start over and go in a totally different direction. So I love when my kids make mistakes in here because they're going to grow from those mistakes and they're going to realize they can make them outside the art room too and it's still, it's still okay. That is the gift, one of the many gifts of the wonderful world of art. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Believe it or not, it's time to start planning for summer and to tell us about the summer learning opportunities we have for our students. We have Erin Gruneveld, an administrator with Academic Service, who I also like to call summer school extraordinaire. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy to be here to talk about summer school. Excited for the opportunities for our students. And I'm sure our parents are excited to have uh, their students continue, you know, throw a little vacation in there, but yes. also, you know, let's not put a stop to the learning. Uh, so I think when parents think summer school, they think I'm going to get a list of things that are available and I'm going to sign up, uh, but there are different approaches. So, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. There definitely are different approaches. Um, we've got some opportunities for students that are very criterion based um, that, and that encompasses most of our programs that are state mandated. And I'll talk about those as we go through the levels okay. um, of opportunities. So parents would actually receive an invitation um, letter from their school for their students to participate in some of the programs. Then we fan out a little bit and the students will have an opportunity that um, are more targeted opportunities. So that might include a certain grade level or a certain group of students. And okay. then we go out all the way to all inclusive where all of our students, depending on their grade level, will be able to participate in summer opportunities. So based on those invitations, it's either something that is required, that they need, or just simply some something to expand their learning throughout the summer. That is a great way to summarize it, yes. Okay, all right, so, so where do we start? You said it was kind of like a tiered approach. It is, so what I'll do is I'll start by talking about the programs that are offered by level, elementary, middle, and high. Okay. And something I'd really like parents to know is we do offer a variety variety of face-to-face um, -face offerings as well as virtual. That's good so to know. So that yeah. is going to let parents, perhaps if they want to, engage their student in more than one opportunity. So their child might be attending a face-to-face -face program, but they still want to opt them into a virtual program as well, and that is absolutely okay. And the important words that I said there were opting in. So parents will need to make sure if they want their student to participate that they do sign their child up for an opportunity. That way they're guaranteed a seat, but also they're guaranteed to come home with a computer for this summer. So right. if you like, I can start talking about sure. the elementary opportunities. Please do. Okay. Yes. We have a lot of um, opportunities in elementary. I'm going to start with the ones that are a little bit more tight. Okay. And that would be our um, VPK program or voluntary pre-kindergarten program. And that's going to be for our incoming kindergartners this this next school year. So kids that haven't been with us yet that did not already participate in a VPK program. Okay. And those invitations would come from um, early childhood. Great. And then we move into what's called our ESY program. And those are for our students that have an IEP that indicate that they should participate in summer school. And parents will receive an invitation as well for that program. And then our final super tight one is a reading camp. And as we know, in third grade, we are still under the state statute of mandatory retention this year. So for any of our students that do score a level one on FSA, 
we do offer a program for summer learning and reading right. with the opportunity at the end of that to be able to move on to fourth grade. So obviously that's very targeted mm -hmm. and parents will receive an invitation for that as well. But now we're gonna fan out a little bit for elementary school and we've got some other camps and opportunities. For our second grade students district-wide, we'll be offering a face-to-face -face program for a reading and math boot camp. And these are gonna be for our students that might be struggling a little bit with the standards, so an invitation to parents will come home for that as well. But that will be for all of our second graders in the district and will be face-to-face. -face. Then for our English language learners, we offer for fourth grade students a science camp that allows them to continue their language acquisition, but, but project-based in science as they head into fifth grade for again, right. of course, the assessment that they must take, and that's face-to-face -face as well. So because this targets fourth grade students, that will be an invitation that parents receive as well. Then there's a virtual opportunity for our English language learner parents. So this opportunity actually goes K through 11th grade. And that is for students at home at their leisure to work in Rosetta, Rosetta Stone as okay. well as Imagine Math. So they can work on their own during the summer whenever they can. So they can opt into that as well. And then in, I'm going to stick with elementary, even though this goes through grade eight, students can opt in to continue learning through their iReady program. So reading and math, working about 15 minutes a day or 45 minutes a week um, in reading, in math, to hopefully help us not have that summer slide that sometimes right. happens. And again, this cannot interfere at all. Go on that vacation, sit on the beach and have them uh, work a little bit in that iReady. So that's something virtually that parents can do as well. And that's for our sitting, current in district kindergarten through fifth grade students. Great, all right, so now we move to middle, correct? Now we're gonna move to middle school. <laughs> now make sure you don't get any sand or water in those laptops. Yes, there. that's <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, that's so true. <laughs> so for middle school, we have some very similar programming, um, but we also have, um, again, a little bit more targeted. So now we're into a grade level where students have to earn credit to be able to be promoted. So we absolutely have credit recovery for our students that may need that in grade six seven and eight and that will be done virtually so again and they will have the support of a teacher they will have a google classroom so they really will be supported in it but we feel that the virtual platform really allows us to reach more students that may need um, that credit retrieval our six through eight stu grade students also are allowed to participate in the iReady that I detailed a little bit with elementary. Mm -hmm. So you just can opt your child into that. That's virtual. So they could do credit recovery and still be doing iReady should a parent wish. Great. Um, and we also continue with our English language learners. Our uh, sitting sixth and seventh graders are invited to a face-to-face -face science camp because they face that assessment in eighth grade. And we also continue to offer the virtual with Rosetta Stone and Imagine Math through, for our sixth through eighth graders. Um, we do have the ESY um, that is tied to an IEP that goes okay. all the way through all the levels. So you would, parents would receive um, an invitation from the ESC department for that. Now we're going to get into some new offerings for our middle oh, school students. Great. So we do have STEM camps and they are offered face to face. They're offered at two high school sites, Cape High and Dunbar High, and it is completely project based. Um, it really is an amazing opportunity to get in there and use a lot of learning to create projects. Um, and those, those invitations will be coming to all of our students from their home school. And that's gonna target just our middle school students. So sixth through eighth graders have that opportunity face to face. Great. One thing that we're doing to help our uh, students accelerate if they would like to, um, our eighth grade students currently sitting in eighth grade can participate in a Lee virtual program just for the summer. And they have the opportunity if they would like to get that HOPE required class out of the way this summer, they can. Nice. They could take Spanish 1 or Spanish 2 through Lee Virtual School. And they can also take driver's education Ooh. through Lee, Lee Virtual School. Little caveat that, to that though, parents, that would only be um, the virtual component. Correct. Not the driving component. So if you're looking for that insurance break, 
that's not going to be the one that gives it to you. Uh But those are free opportunities to advance for our eighth graders should they want that. Yeah, why not? What a great opportunity to advance. All right, so now we move on to high school or we're... Yes, we're going to move on to high school. And again, lots of these programs are going to repeat. Of course, with high school, we have the credit recovery for our ninth through 12th graders should they need it done virtually just like the other programs. I mean, we are getting closer to graduation, so we really need to start thinking about those credit retrievals. Yes. And I know schools are working on that right now. But if there is a situation where credit still needs to be retrieved over the summer, we can make that happen with, you know, you and the students so that they're able to get graduated by the end of the summer. Right. The ELL camps or English language learner camps move now at the high school level to a language acquisition camp that is face to face. And that is really for our newcomer students. So in our country, two years or less, it is a face to face program that really helps them socialize, get to know schools, um, meet some wonderful peers and continue that language acquisition. And as I stated, the virtual component still exists all the way up through grade 11. So you could actually participate in both if they would like to do that. Um, The ESY program that's tied to an IEP continues all the way through 12th grade, and that is also face-to-face. All of the high schools are gonna be offering driver's education. So um, that component is the driving component, so it is face-to-face, and you'll receive information from your child's high school um, should for that opportunity should you want to participate in That's it. That's great. We do have uh, two math camps that are going to be offered. Uh, one of them is math graduation boot camp. And this is to help our students that may still need to pass a required assessment get that under their belt and get those skills polished up to do it. This will be offered at every single um, high school and it will be virtual. So if your child might still need that algebra one, EOC, geometry, or any of those concordant scores that are out there that we are under right now, which is super helpful for us to help get them graduated, they can participate in this program. And then based on the state guidelines and the state window, at the very end of that boot camp, the students will come into their high school, their own high school, um, the last week, and they'll be able to take the state assessments, okay. hopefully moving them on or graduating them should they need it. Um, your school, your child's high school, will definitely be reaching out to you regarding credit recovery, the need for math graduation boot camp, all of those things, because obviously that's very specific to mm-hmm. a student. So I don't want parents to feel as if they're going to need to determine these things they absolutely will be communicated with by their school a brand new offering this year is our grade 9 uh, math boot camp and that's going to be for our students that are entering into high school so it's actually our seat our seated eighth graders going into ninth grade and this is going to be for our students that are still maybe facing the challenge of taking that algebra 1 requirement mm-hmm. which is not going away Um, so we want to make sure that if there's any support that's needed we're offering that it will be face to face um, and uh, it it will really help target those skills to help those students again that will be a targeted invite parents won't have to worry about knowing an invitation will come and finally just like we did for our eighth graders we are offering acceleration opportunities through Lee Virtual School for our high schoolers. They can take HOPE if they still need it. They can take Spanish 1 or 2. Um, They can also take the driver's education, but remember that difference between Mm -hmm. face-to-face and virtual. They can also accelerate at the high school level only in core subjects, math, English, science, and social studies. A very uh, important thing for you to understand is this is not credit recovery. This would be acceleration. Credit recovery will be done at the home site, not through LVS. And that pretty much wraps up all of the opportunities. Um, And just to help parents know, the majority of our programs start on June 13th and run through July 14th 
Monday through Thursday for four hours, 8 to 12. Now, our virtual programs, um, of course, you'll be able to do that whenever your child mm -hmm. wishes, but if they need to touch base with a teacher, it would be during those morning hours. Um, and then, of course, our face-to-face -face programs, the majority of them run Monday through Thursday, 8 to 12 for the kiddos. Lots of the programs do offer transportation. Breakfast right. and lunch will be served for all of our face-to-face, -face. Wow. but those details will absolutely be included in the communications that come out from the school, so you're going to know if transportation's offered, if it's not offered, um, and, and, and what to expect for all of those things. I hope you find one or maybe two things. That is, a, those are a lot of opportunities. So yes, whoever thinks so that excited. everyone is off during the summer is, is wrong. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for all of the information. And just, we just asked our parents to be patient and they'll hear from their yes. school regarding and you this. You will hear from your school and reach out to the school if you have a concern though, after you feel as if you should have been notified. Right, okay. Well, thank you so much, Erin. And when we come back, the Harlem Globetrotters are coming to town. So we're going to watch Adam throw a little ball with one of our <laughs> special guests. Welcome back to Parent University. We are so excited to have a special guest. We have Flip from the Harlem Globetrotters. Welcome, Flip. How you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is fantastic. So we have some really exciting news related to the Harlem Globetrotters, the event that's coming up uh, in Fort Myers. But first, let's get to know Flip. Flip, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I started playing basketball at the age of four. My father put the basketball in my hand. My father played with Doc Rivers, and their rival was Isaiah Thomas. So I come from a basketball family. So I've been playing basketball after basketball after basketball since the age of four. Not just playing basketball, but actually playing basketball. I was in different camps after camps. So. I made a video 10 years ago showcasing my 47 inch vertical, meaning I can jump really high. <laughs> the Globe tried to solve my video, they flew me out to tryouts, and now I'm still going strong 10 years, seven months later. Now that's amazing. I actually had a video in which I had a 10 inch vertical. It yeah. hasn't gotten the same attention from the, from the Globetrotters, so they haven't reached out to me. Uh, so you've been 10 years with the Globetrotters. Yes, sir. Um, you've traveled all around the yeah. world? All 50 states, 65 plus different countries. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> so Flip actually is going to show us uh, maybe something that we could do or try to do at home with the basketball. Flip, what do you have? Okay. So a uh, little simple thing that the parents can do with their kids. Simple, you could take it between your legs, take it under your legs again. You just hold it out simple and just punch. Ooh, the punch. So like here. Under the leg. Here. Under the leg. Hold it out. Punch. Just Ooh. like that. And then they can take it around the back. If you can't go around the back, you can simply roll it. For the kids, you can roll it around your back. And then that's simple, off the knee. Ooh, the knee kick. Mm-hmm. Boom. Not bad. That's simple. And something special that parents may have to learn it, but I'm gonna teach him. It's iconic. It's one, it's what we call the ball spin. You see our you see our logo. It's the finger with the ball spinning on it. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. I've never been able to do it before. I'm gonna show you. I got you. Hold your finger up nice and strong for me. Oh, oh dang. Good. Yeah, go. <laughs> oh, lost the ball. Boom, got it. Oh, let me get you a better spin. There we go. Wow. There we go. Boom. Flip. That's amazing, man. <laughs> just like I that. appreciate that. <laughs> that is great. Like, yeah, so just like that, Dan, you want to get advanced, but that's for later on when you when you learn the tricks. 
I've been on the team for a while, so. I'm not going to say you do that, but. Yeah. Once you get advanced, you'll do it. In time. But yes. Fl- but Flip, you know, so you are known, you're known primarily, well, with the name, mm-hmm. right? For doing acrobatics, flips, you know, uh, backflips off the anything? Anything. Since I've been a kid, I've been, I used to get in trouble. But for not, not saying the kids, don't, don't try it at home, but flipping off monkey bars, swings, desks, all kind of crazy stuff. So I used to get in trouble. So now my mom used to yell at me for flipping on everything. Now she's happy. She's like, okay, all right, I see. Now I see and understand. <laughs> and I'll get paid to do it. <laughs> I mean, that's, I, can't, I can't wait to go out and see you. Now, speaking of that, you, yes, guys, are, you guys are in Fort Myers April 30th. 30th, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. At the Hertz Arena. Hertz Arena, April 30th. And stay tuned at the end of the show. Not game over yet. Definitely not. Not game over yet. A <laughs> uh, little flip reference there. Um, but April 30th at Hertz Arena. Uh, and at the end of the show, we're going to do, do a family giveaway. Uh, for some tickets to the Harlem Globetrotters. So thank you so much no for being on. I really thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. Hi parents, Jason Sill here, parent and dad to two awesome kids in the school district. Let's be honest, life is hectic. Between practices, work, parent meetings, it can be tough to always be on top of your child's education. With that said, we all know that parent involvement is so important to our children's success. That's why I'm here to tell you about a resource that's helped me be more engaged with my kids and keep track of where they're at at all times in school. It's called Focus Parent Portal, and it can be used on your phone or computer. Focus Parent Portal provides you, the parents and guardians, a real-time view of your child's assignments, grades, attendance, referrals, progress, report cards, and forms such as emergency contacts and health forms. Focus helps me stay on top of keeping organized and knowing when my child needs a little more help with math, which they can go to mom for, or when they've earned that hot fudge sundae, something they can definitely go to dad for. To sign up for your Focus account, visit leeschools.net slash our underscore schools slash focus, or download from your provider's app store. So do your part, get involved and focus. And we've come to the end of this session, and Adam, it sure looks like you had a lot of fun with Flip. I had a blast. This is one of our this is one of our best episodes, and I really appreciate everybody for tuning in. Absolutely, and we'd like to thank our other guests as always, and you families for joining us. Now, I'm sure some of our families that are watching are really excited seeing you with Flip, and probably want to go check out the Harlem Globetrotters. But before we do that, we got to give a shout out to our schools. We've got Dunbar High School, we've got Cypress Lake High School, and my old teaching alma mater, North Fort Myers High School. Go Red Knights. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Before we do the giveaway, we want to make sure to remind you to watch your emails because we are going to be giving you information on graduation coming up in May. We are so excited for those families that made it through the year. And if you didn't, refer a friend or catch up so that you can join us in our May ceremony. Are you ready for the drawing? I think I am. A family four pack to the Harlem Globetrotters. We have our winner. And the winner is? Cordesia Rankin. Fantastic. And she looks like she's a parent at several schools. So we'll be in touch with you. We'll let you know how to get your prize, right? That's right. We will get in touch with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We go further together.